Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So um, <clears throat> today is a watering day and I do get several questions about watering and um, how I maintain my plants in that regard. So I figure I just bring you along and show you what a typical watering day looks like for me. So let's go ahead and turn on the plants. Okay, so what I like to do first um, is well, I fill up my humidifier every day and I let it run throughout the day. And then I like to do a sweep through of the plants and see who needs um, water. Now, this whole group right here, uh, minus the Gloriosa, these are thirsty plants. So I pretty much know whatever I'm going to water, I'm going to water them. This one has gone, you can see, um, has gone too dry. You can see the, the the leaves start to curl and wrinkle. So this is a sign that you need water. This is a fern. They're very thirsty, so they like to stay wet. And I'm surprised I actually let this one get this dry. And you can tell when you pick it up too, is it's like feather, it's like feather weight. Like you know, it needs water. Um, so I do that. Um, I, I was filming a video yesterday, which will be up soon, of a houseplant tour, and so I was checking over everything. And some of my plants that don't normally, they don't get watered regularly. They were dry, so I knew it was time to do a thorough watering. I do have this. Um, it is a moisture meter as well as a light meter. It comes with, this is my little plant gadget drawer. Um, it comes with this, and it shows you um, a lot of plants, but not all, of course, what their moisture number should be. In their lighting thing uh so <clears throat> to be perfectly honest i use this sometimes mainly for like my bigger plants like this one for the smaller plants like i said i know the ones that are thirsty and then i know which ones need more or less water so just to show you how this works let's see if this plant is even on there so begonia should have a moisture of seven so this is a begonia YDI right here you're gonna look at this meter make sure it's turned to moisture then you just want to take it like this and stick it in the plant you want it to be near the roots to get your accurate reading we're gonna look at that and that says it's actually at a nine so we know that this plant does not need any water so that's pretty much how that works like I said I use it like when I remember and on bigger plants or also plants that I feel like I'm watering a lot um, like they seem dry even if they're not type of thing. So I like to make sure. Um, other than that, take your finger, you stick it in an inch. That's to your for your knuckle. Then you want to pull it out. And, and usually if you could just dust it off like that, it's dry. But we saw what the moisture we just read on this one. So I'm going to leave this one be. This one is in peat moss as well. So it's a little bit different. But that's basically how you check the plants to see if they need water um a lot of plants like this one will show you signs of being thirsty let's see um there was another one over here that needed water also this one here you can see kind of like a droopiness compared to these that are sticking straight out that's another sign of water again you can use your moisture meter just take your finger uh or take your finger stick it down in there and you can see that came out almost clean. This plant is dry and it needs water. So you want to just give your plants a once over. Once you get used to them, um, you know when they need water and when you can leave them alone. Uh, this guy right here is looking a little droopy and I can even just look in the soil there and tell that it's dry. So I'll give this one um, a little bit of water and yeah that's basically the signs you want to look for plants like this um this is my philodendron micans it will droop when it needs water and so you'll be able to tell the difference between a droopy a droopy plant and a happy plant so don't worry yourself about that um your plants will tell you they'll tell you what they need so i'm gonna go ahead and get the humidifier filled up and then I'm going to get my watering can and I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you as far as the amount of how much water I put in various plants. All right, so my phone died. I had to switch to my husband's 
I hope the resolution isn't too different. But I was saying, I use filter water. I have a, a Brita filter attachment for the faucet, and that's what I use. So I put this on, and I make sure it's on the highest mist, which is three. And then if these need to be adjusted, which they look fine, make sure I have one kind of blowing towards each direction that I need. Now, the next thing I do, I have it sitting over here on my kid's shelf. This is, it used to have like pancake mix in it to make funnel cakes or something. So this has filter water in as well. This one, I'm gonna water until it leaks through like that. And that's okay, because it falls down into that plant underneath there. I'm gonna give this one a little extra, because I let it get really dry. So there's that. And then I come over here. Since these are ones that I water every couple days, I just give them a light little pour like that because I know that I'm going to be coming back around, you know, in the next couple of days to give it more anyway. So I do that like that. Give this one a little. So it's hard to do holding the camera. Give that one a little bit. And. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna give this guy a little like that. This isn't a cash pot, so any fallout will be in the bottom of that. I'm okay with that because these are um, begonias and calatheas. They are thirsty plants. So now I'm gonna bring you over here <clears throat> to my shelf. Now this little section here has more uh, Marantas and Calatheas, so they're thirsty plants. So I'm gonna come right here and I'm just gonna give it just a little like that. And once again, this is how I water the ones that I know I'm gonna be watering again in a couple days because they just require that level of moisture. Excuse my son in the background. So these <clears throat> would be watered differently from how I would water some of my other ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and get in there. I'm trying to get you a good angle. Like that. And then I have another hey, one. This pair is yummy. Back here. Yummy. Another thing I like about these shelves is that it's glass. So if um if it's a leak or whatever, it doesn't matter. I can just clean it off, which I need to do. So again, these are the plants that I'm just giving a little drizzle because I water them more often. Now, if it was a plant where, like I'm gonna show you, for this one, where it goes dry and then I water it, then I, I soak it. So what I'm saying is if, this, if it's a plant like this philodendron here that I let dry between waterings, when I do water, which you can see like I'm doing here, I soak it. Now, this is a cash pot right here, meaning it doesn't have drainage. So I'm gonna let this set like that for a minute, let it absorb the water that it wants, and then I'll go back around, I'll lift the pot out. This is actually still in the nursery pot. I'll lift it out and then I'll dump whatever excess water is down there. Let's see, who else did I notice needed some water? This one is another one that I lightly water because I kinda feel like I overwatered it in the beginning. So, <clears throat> I do more frequent waterings with this one with less water. So a good rule of thumb is the more frequently you water, I would say you use less water each time. So like with my Calathea and my Marantas, I showed you how I do a drizzle over the top because that's a more frequent watering plant. And then that's pretty much what I do. I just go in and do that. Um, actually, I'll go get some more water and I'll show you one other different way that I water, and I'll, it'll be, I'll use my string of turtles as an example for that, that, um, that technique. Let me go get some more water. So the densely packed leaves um, of the string of turtles blocks out pretty much all of the uh, soil. And then also, these leaves don't like to be um, sitting in water, so you have the potential that they could get rot. And so, and so, um, 
what I do is bottom water. So this is still in the nursery pot and it has holes at the bottom. This does not have holes at the bottom. So to bottom water, you just take your water, pour some in the bottom right here. No exact amount, I just pour some. And then you can see down in there you have the water and then you just let the plant soak up what it wants. And this process is called bottom watering. I don't do this for a lot of plants. Um, I do it for, oops, I do it for my peace lily too, because it can be a thirsty plant too. So you just let it sit for a while and let it soak up the water that's gonna soak up. Um, I'll check it in a few minutes and if it has soaked all the water up, I'll put more and then I'll come back a bit later and whatever is left, I then take from the, uh, take out of the cash pot and, um, and dump it out. So that is pretty much it for how I water my plants. I'm going to go ahead and finish watering. There are a couple more, um, like this fern down here and then a couple of my marble queens in the back. I'm going to give them some water. Um, cactus, um, like this, this one here and that one there, as well as snake plants, they very rarely need water. So they're to the point where you can almost just like forget about them. They rarely need water. I would say once a month I give them water um, if I had to estimate, but they can show you signs that they need water, um, that they're overwatered by, you'll have like uh, mushy, mushy uh, stems. So <clears throat> you definitely don't want to overwater your cacti. So the main thing I would say is just know the watering needs of your plants and pay attention to your plants because, hold on, let me turn this around. Pay attention to your plants. Um, a lot of times I hear people say they have a watering schedule, which um, I don't really like to call it that because that would mean like, a, oh, okay, every day on this day I water the plants and plants just don't work like that. Um, so you want to do more so pay attention to what your plants are telling you that they need versus um, wanting to be on a set schedule. I think it's a good idea to have a time, you know, every week or maybe even every day that you look over your plants, not necessarily to give them water, but just to see, you know, how they're doing overall, if they're getting, you know, enough light, if there are any pests or anything like that. Um, just getting in the habit of that is good because if there is a pest problem or if there is an issue, being in the, the, the habit of checking on your plants, you could catch it sooner than later and have a more favorable outcome. So I think, <clears throat> excuse me, those are the main things to keep in mind as far as water and, um, and humidity goes. And also bear in mind the, um, what am I trying to say? The temperature of your house, the conditions in your house are gonna affect your plants differently than what happens in mine. So as in all of these videos, I'm showing you what I do for my plants and you can see you know, the condition and the health of my plants based on what I do to them, but it also factors in the conditions in my home. My house is hot, so that will make me water more frequently than say um, if I was somewhere else and it was a low, it is a lower temperature. You know what I mean? So I'm basically saying, take these as guidelines of, you know, broad strokes of what you want to do, but also keep in mind your plants and your actual conditions in your home. So thanks for watching guys. Um, let me know in the comments what type of things you do to maintain the health of your plants in terms of watering and um, humidity. Another thing that I do Okay, let me wrap it up because the kids are getting restless. Another thing that I do is mist. I have a spray bottle. I did that before I had a humidifier. I still do it sometimes now. Um, I just didn't bring that, but literally a bottle with some water in it. And then I just um, like spray down all of the foliage on the plants. That help keep helps to keep dust down in between when you actually wash your, wash your leaves. And also it's a good way again to see if there are any pests um, creeping around so thanks for watching let me know in the comments like i said what type of techniques or um, what's your process for watering and also if you use a humidifier 
um what do you what do you think like how have you noticed the difference before or after having a humidifier because i got this humidifier um as you saw and i have i don't i can't say that i've noticed a super big difference only the ones that are like literally right on top of the humidifier so i don't know if i need another one for my space yeah, if my front room is too big so maybe a second one would be helpful but anyhow that's it for um watering like i said i wanted to show because i do get questions about it i think a lot of times people just overthink watering their plants in the beginning the main thing that killed a lot of my plants was too much water i was like watering some plants every day <laughs> which is ridiculous now that i look back and i know what i know now but all right see you next time bye